Hi everyone, Empress Justice here, aka Fabian Deacon. If you'd like to check out daily readings for Empress Justice Tarot, they're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. If you'd also like to check out lunar readings, there's Empress Justice YouTube, Empress Justice Tarot YouTube, um, where you can check out the April 2022 reading, the new moon in Rebati reading. We've just reached the first quarter, by the way, we've just passed it. We passed it on the 9th. Um, we, I also put the full moon reading early, so you can check that out too. Um, yeah, so check that out on Empress Justice to Ray YouTube. So, update on me. Well, nothing's really happened today. I mean, it's only like what, you know, it's only quarter to 10 in the morning over here. So the day, the day is still young um, when it comes to what might happen today with my landlord or with a, you know with anything else um but yeah nothing really has taken place this morning everything's been really quiet um the only really eventful thing is my washing machine was playing up and then it started working again <laughs> so yeah that's about the most exciting thing to happen so i wanted to actually talk about something really really quite broad and i wanted to talk about capitalism and socialism and communism and all these different political ideas being thrown around what i really enjoy is that i live in a time where the same system that has arguably kept me down as a woman as someone who's black as someone who's queer and as someone who's fat as well, because that comes into like capitalism and the whole point of commodification, right? So I'm really glad I live in a time where the current structure and the current powers that exist are being challenged. And then on top of that, we've got Havana syndrome coming out. We've got, you know, talks about powerful people being corrupt coming out because, you know, it basically like the whole political system's being exposed the current economic systems being exposed, which is why the reset is about to happen. Like I said before, when people start waking up, that's when the reset button is clicked. So yeah, we already saw this, but I'm glad to live in a time where people are kind of in REM sleep at least, if not waking fully up, right? But the more I hear discourse surrounding commodification and capitalism and you know, the current structures, the more I realize that there are people who are criticizing it and asking questions, which is wonderful. But I'm thinking, what is the point in asking these questions and going back and forth if there are no real solutions to the questions and we're not honest with ourselves? The whole reason why our current political current political and economic system exists in the first place is because above all above all else right human beings are primal and at a primal level what do we value most safety and what form does that come in that comes in rules laws conveniences in fact convenience is a big part of what makes us feel safe Everything that we have surrounding us right now, especially in this country, in the UK, was built off the backs of enslaved people and not in the past, now. Everything that we currently enjoy is built off stolen wealth, um, built on the backs, back of enslavement. And, you know, it's built off the back of very, a very, very few group of people in power that have shared the wealth in accordance with what they see fit, basically. So as much as I want to criticize this system, as I haven't been able to win in this system yet, um, the truth of the matter is, is that without this system, would I even have half of what I have? No, I wouldn't. Because as human beings, we value what? Safety, security. And if it's concentrated that much more among the few, then it makes the rest of us want to strive to get it even more. And that is part of what 
that is part of what work ethic actually entails and nobody talks about that everybody wants to talk about working hard and being nice but don't seem to understand that those things are basically about survival they're not about morality at all they're not about morality at all and the harder you work the more likely you are to be exploited it makes you competitive sure and certainly like in the initial stages working harder and being nicer than everyone else it you know on a certain level it makes you competitive for a time but then you start to be exploited because you're too good at your job and it's only a matter of time before the person who hired you is benefiting more from your work than you are now a lot of people say that that's just capitalism but let's be real in communist countries, in socialist countries, in capitalist countries, the rich man always finds a way. The rich man or the powerful man always finds a way. It doesn't matter what society we live in. The rich and powerful, they always find a way. They always find a way, because the thing is, with regards to taxes, the thing that everybody says that oh, oh, taxation is theft, that was originally meant for rich people. All the taxes that are squeezing the poor right now, they were meant for rich people in the first place. But the rich, what happened is the rich man found loopholes around it, which meant who has to foot the bill? People who are less interested in money than they are. So it doesn't matter whether we end up in communism, but the first thing that we don't seem to understand is that it doesn't matter what political structure we end up in. There's, is, there, is, there is always going to be a certain amount of wealth concentrated in one area. Look at Russia, look at, you can even look at Cuba. Look at those countries. A certain amount of wealth and power is always going to be concentrated among a select few. The only thing that really differs is how much that wealth is concentrated among that select few. But again, the rich and powerful always find a way. It doesn't matter what political or economic system we find ourselves in, which really begs the question, how do we take ourselves out of that system where the few get power and reinforce our sense of safety because without that think about it in these terms right in like in like nomadic society as far as i know right as far as i know in nomadic societies in um in nomadic societies as far as i know right um i hope you can still hear me in nomadic societies, as far as I know, um, whoever is known as chief or king, they are usually the ones who are, how do I put this? They're usually the ones who are the best able to protect the clan. So it's usually the physically strongest. It's basically mimics the animal kingdom. Whoever's the physically strongest, whoever is the best at protecting the environment, they are usually um, they are usually held aloft as king or given the most resources in order to protect everyone else, right? So the the logic is is that if you've got someone who's healthier than everyone else, who can fight better than everyone else, then you get they get the majority of the resources and they use those resources in turn to improve the community around them. What if in this day and age, the people who are best able to protect everyone are not people wielding guns and knives, but economists? What if economists are the new kings? And what if the only real purpose of people who are fought or people who have been spies or is to be basically glorified foot soldiers? What if the economists are the kings or were the kings all along? What if the bankers were the kings? And all these people like politicians and stuff like that, they're not 
put there, they're not put there as the ones making the real decisions, but they're put there to be, to be the management, to be the foot soldiers. I know I'm not making much sense, but it just seems to me like it doesn't matter what we do or what political leaning we end up in, we're always going to have a system where whoever we deem can keep us safest. And, you know, us being human beings, we conflate, we conflate violence with strength over here. So whoever we feel can protect us the most, those are who are going to get the most of our resources. It doesn't matter if we're communists. It doesn't matter if we're, um, why I call it there. It doesn't matter if we're communists. It doesn't matter if we're socialists. It doesn't matter if we're capitalists. Whoever we deem can protect us the most and give the people the most and give back to the community the most. Even if they don't in reality give back to the community as much as we think they do. Based on the services and the conveniences and the feelings of security that they give us, we are going to hand over our money to whatever it is that we feel gives us that. And that's the reality of business. That's the reality of society in general. We're always going to give out the most of our resources to whoever we feel makes us feel safest. And that is going to lead to commodity at some point. It's unavoidable. It's unavoidable. It is going to lead to the commodification of people at some point. At some point, in order to keep the um, society thriving and surviving, strong hierarchies are gonna be put in place. And you know what that means. Strong hierarchy usually means eugenics. It usually means sexism. It usually means racism, tribalism at the very least, because remember the Bible. In the Bible, it was very tribalistic. It was even somewhat racist. And anybody, who, anybody who's familiar with the Hebrew Israelites philosophy of who the devil's children were, You'll know, you know what I mean when I say the Bible is, is, it's got racism in it. So the Bible's racist and, and tribalist, right? And, you know, in the, in the, those, are just, those are just some of the times, some of the examples that I'm giving of like a society built on a strong hierarchy. It's only a matter of time before people are categorized in terms of their usefulness to the overall picture. If they are too resistant, but they are strong, they're going to be at the bottom rung of the ladder. Like, it's all about who is the least threat to the system that's been put in place. There's going to be a strong hierarchy established in accordance with that. Because if you're not evolving as a society, you're going to die as a society. So, Whilst I'm glad that we're talking about this and I'm glad that we're opening it up to discussion and I'm glad that we're criticizing it, again, I've said it a thousand times during this video, it's only a matter of time before it happens again because that human need or that primal need to feel safe is always going to take priority. How do we keep humanity feeling safe? without reverting back to the same old systems that we had before. How do we do that? How do we ensure that we're still happy in spite of certain comforts being sacrificed? This is a rabbit hole that a lot of people are not prepared for. This is a rabbit hole that a lot of people are not prepared for at all it's not as simple as just you know i want certain things to end because i'm on the receiving end of what's really i've been on the receiving end of what's really fucked up in the world so it's easy for somebody like me to say i want this i want to burn the whole fucking thing down i want to burn this whole fucking thing down but then i'm starting to think what can we replace it with how are we going to replace it? What sacrifices need to be made? How is the rich man going to make sure that he's, he's got full advantage over the situation? Because you know that's exactly what he's going to do. Rich white man. But, you know, you have to take all these things into, into consideration. How do we make human beings feel safe 
whilst giving people a system that is that commodifies people less that treats people with respect that shares wealth more fairly among people how do we have that a world without eugenics a world without you know all that sh- all that shit going on how do we have all that and still make human beings feel safe because the likelihood is is that a world without that it may go back to tribalism all over again and it might go back to little pockets of society that that can only really settle things through violence you know it's it's um because i've been i've been reading history books and it's usually the winning team settles things through violence and then they incorporate peace they bring the losing parties into it and then they incorporate then they make it a bit more liberal all that type of shit so it's i'm not articulating myself very well but it just seems to me like people don't really pay attention to history that well and history is something that you've got to pay attention to with regards to this conversation, which I'm not having, I'm not very good at explaining. But um, yeah, yeah, it's a lot more complicated than just rip the whole fucking thing down. Because we rip the whole fucking thing down, there'll be blissful chaos for a time, but then the real work begins of, okay, well, how do we have a better system without repeating the same mistakes as last time? So, yeah, so I did have electronic harassment today. Um, Sometimes you get electronic harassment where you're forced to pee, and I did get a little bit of that. I do get a lot of electronic harassment, but it's usually very, very minor, and it's not usually very big, but yeah. Anyway, is there anything else that I've forgotten? Okay, so in closing, society happens in cycles. That's A. B, human beings need to feel safe more than anything else. But until we actually figure out or are honest with ourselves about the fact that human beings need to feel safe, we're not going to come up with any real solutions. Third thing is, the rich man will always find a way. Huh. Believe that. Fourth thing is, uh, I can't remember what the fourth thing is. Who are, who are our kings going to be? Who are our kings and queens going to be? That's the thing that we have to decide. How do we have everything that we want, everything that we've enjoyed, everything that we've taken pleasure and comfort in? How do we have the same feeling from our society or better without the current system that we have in place? These are questions that we really need to ask. And now I've got to go because I've rambled enough. I've got shit to do today. That reminds me, I have to read Adam, Adam Smith. I've got to read my Adam Smith book. I, that's been lacking, bitch. <laughs> so, yeah. That was it for me today. I love you guys. Take care, my fellow TIs. Bye-bye.